All right, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna try and overclock the Ryzen 9 9950X all the way up to six gigahertz. I've already done this with a couple of other CPUs with the 9700X and the 9600X. And today we're gonna try it with the 16 core 9950X. Just like in the previous videos, first I'll show you the BIOS configuration, highlight all the options that are most important for our overclocking attempt. And then we go into the operating system and try and hit the six gigahertz. So let's get started, shall we? The first thing that I'll do is I will load one of the overclocking strategies that I've used in Scatterbencher number 80. And the one that I'll be using is the one with curve optimization. So this one is saved in profile four and I can load from profile four. And now we go to the extreme tweaker menu and here we don't really need to change that much options except for enabling a synchronous e-clock. And what that allows us to do is change the reference, the reference clock only for the CPU cores. So any changes that we do to the base clock only applies to the CPU cores. And you can see here BCLK2 frequency, it's currently set to auto, but we're gonna change that to 102.5. And what does that do, that 102.5? Well, every voltage frequency uh, point will be increased by 2.5%, right? Second thing we'll do is we'll go to the precision boost overclocking menu right here. And I'm going to be a little bit more conservative with the operating frequency. So I'll change the CPU boost clock override from positive to negative and set it to negative 400. What that will do is it will restrict the maximum frequency for CCD zero from the default of 5.75 gigahertz to 5.35 gigahertz, so 400 megahertz less. Do note though that this is again adjusted with our reference clock. So it will be about 5.4 something something uh, gigahertz. And then in the operating system, what we'll do is we'll change from minus 400 to plus 200 again. So then we have a, an Fmax boost override of 5,950 megahertz. We apply 2.5% uh, extra to that, and that will give us about 6.1 gigahertz. And then we can start playing around with different settings to hopefully see six gigahertz. The second thing I need to adjust is obviously the curve optimizer because this will drop the voltage. It's, the curve optimizer is used to undervolt the processor. We can also do that at runtime and we will. However, I don't want to undervolt at boot. I wanna make all of those changes at runtime. So I'm just gonna disable this from the BIOS. And then, well, we're just gonna save and go into the operating system. Now, the booting might take a while with the AMD platform. So I'll just cut it here and then pick it up when we're in the operating system. All right, looks like we're in the operating system. So now we're going to be opening a couple of software tools that will help us guide to hopefully six gigahertz. So the first tool is hardware info and hardware info will allow us to check the effective clock of a given core. So you can see it has core clock here and it has core effective clock. Now, the main difference between the two is that the core clock kind of indicates what the core is configured to, whereas the core effective clock will report what frequency the clock the core is actually running at. So it kind of measures the clock cycles over a given period, whereas the core clock just reports, hey, the core is set at this frequency. And so you can see that there's actually quite a big difference between the two because the, the core clock will boost you know, up to 5.5 gigahertz here on a couple of cores, but the effective clock is pretty much zero for most of the cores here. The second application that we'll open here is uh, CPU-Z XOC. You know, you see that I have some six gigahertz results. And this is a version where I've configured it to be in XOC mode. What does XOC mode mean? Well, it basically means that we have set in this ini file XOC equals one. What's the difference between regular CPU-Z and XOC? CPU-Z, in a regular CPU-Z, the application will run a stress test before capturing the frequency. Whereas with XLC mode, it just captures the frequency. And that's what we need when we try to achieve really high frequencies, right? Then the next 
tool that I'm going to be using is Nopbench. And what Nopbench does is it simply loads a core with Nop instructions. And Nop instructions essentially do nothing, right? So it's the pretty much one of the lightest loads that you can run on a CPU core. And the reason why we do that is because I want to see in hardware info what is the effective clock of a given core. Um, some people have asked me, you know, how these these how do these knobs relate to gaming or other workloads like Cinebench? And the, the simple answer is that it doesn't relate at all. The only purpose for this application is to keep the core as active as possible, while at the same time having the lightest load as possible, because we don't want the workload to affect our maximum frequency. So I'll put that down here. And then I also need to, oops, select my best core. And on this CPU, the best core is core three. So what I'll do is I'll put not bench here on, um, I've set the affinity to core here, CPU number six. And then we can check in hardware info. Look, okay, it's running on core three thread uh, zero. So the first thread. And then I'm also going to change the CPU Z here to core three. And so then we're pretty much ready to get started. We'll just open up the folder here so we can see when validations are being saved. Oh, how do we capture the validation file? Very simple. We are in the CPU Z window. We press F7 and then it creates this CVF file, which we can later upload to the CPU Z website. The last tool we'll need for our six gigahertz attempt is Shamino's work tool, which you can download from the ROG forums. And this work tool gives you a bunch of tools to essentially diagnose and play around with the CPU. Um, it has a bunch of tools that's also available in, for example, uh, Ryzen Master or Hydra. It's just, this is a more simpler interface and I'm very used to working with this interface. So the first thing that we'll do uh, in the in the work tool is we're going to bring the f max back to its maximum limit and the maximum limit is 5950 that's 5750 plus our 200 f max boost override and we can immediately see that'll make the cpu jump up to 5.96 gigahertz so it immediately jumped up quite uh, quite a bit higher than what we had it before I can make a validation file here, for example, and then the validation file will show 5.946. So not, what's the next step for us? Undervolting. So when we undervolt, we try and bring these higher VF points below the voltage threshold, and then hopefully our CPU will jump to that frequency. And instead of doing an all core curve optimizer like I did in previous six gigahertz videos, this time around, I'm just gonna do core three. So I'm only going to undervolt core three. And I guess we can start with maybe minus five, uh, apply that and see where it brings us. And it gives us five, nine, nine, four, six gigahertz. I saw six gigahertz, uh, but not really that consistently. So let's maybe try minus seven. We do two less than that, reduce it by two more. And we see some six gigahertz. Let's try and do capture the validation. Do we have it? Ooh, no, not yet. Trying again. Not quite. Every time we press it does. Oh, there we go. We have a, a frequency of 6003. So later we'll go and check if the validation is actually working. Uh, but what we can do now is not this. What we can do now is try um, higher curve optimizer values and see if we can push the frequency a little bit higher. So uh, let's see. 6009, this is something. At some point, the CPU will be unstable. Um, we can see, okay, 14, maybe we can do something at 620. Uh, no. We can see it's 6030, but unfortunately we can't quite grab the validation file. So maybe if we try 12, can we try a little bit hard more? Whoop, no, that's uh, starting to get very unstable. So maybe back down a little, open this so we can 
continue trying, apply. Okay, we have over 6,020. Oh, and now it crashed, definitely crashed now. So let's reboot and then let's check the validation file in the CPUZ website. All right, so we are back in the operating system and let's have a look if our validation files are legit, if we can upload them to the validation website. So first up, let's open the CPUZ validation website, valid.x86.fr. Yeah, and good, we're already immediately connected, so that's great. Uh, meaning that every validation file will be tied to my account. And then I'm going to select the file here from desktop. And in CPZ XOC 6024. And let's check validate. Oh, and there we go. It's perfectly validated. So we can see here our core three was 6024 megahertz. So there you have it. Our 9950X is at six gigahertz. It's idling, but it's idling at six gigahertz. All right, that's it for this video. See you next one.